Hello, everybody. Welcome to Entrepreneur's Kit Hub or eKit Hub. Today, I have a very, very special guest with me. It is no other than Alice Siba, my business partner. And um, we have a few questions submitted by our community, you guys. And today, we're going to dive into the questions and pick Alice's brain. Hello, Ouch. Alice. How, how are you doing today? <laughs> I'm doing fantastic. Very glad to be here, of course. Do we get really to tell glad. them that you're in the other room, that we're in the same house? You're just in the living room? What's Biscuit doing? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, Biscuit is sleeping on the couch. I can't turn the camera around, um, but she's sleeping right there, right on Okay, I'll we'll tell let's her not... I miss her. Yeah, she misses you. But let's <laughs> not distract her because, um, you know. <laughs> she might become a disruption for this either way so uh we would like to start with the first question this is probably a great place to start since you're sharing secrets of someone who has sold millions of dollars of content courses and printable over the past couple of decades uh, beth asked about your story of how you first got started and how you progressed to where you are now and what would you have done differently well, that's a great and big question, of course, so I will I will not give you all the boring details, but like, honestly, you know, it was 2002 and I was never really an entrepreneurial minded person. It wasn't my goal to start a business, but I had a baby and I was like, I don't really like going to work every day. <laughs> I don't mind working, but I don't want to do it every day. And, you know, I just thought there was a different way to do it and also to be home with my kid. And I was also someone who at one point thought that they would be a writer, fiction writer, maybe a poet. <laughs> but that never happened. But I still always really enjoyed writing. So it was actually kind of perfect. I came online and saw, you know, what what are my options? And I started out as a writer for pay. So like freelancing and stuff like that. And I think that's a great place for people to start because it was, you know, I traded my time. So it was like a job, but I didn't have to drive to work <laughs> and I got paid and I was able to invest that money into my business and grow it from there. So it wasn't somewhere I ever wanted to stay. But then I evolved into creating done for you content packages, selling courses and things like that. Uh, and I guess the rest is history. Uh, you know, the business has evolved a lot over the years, but content has always been the core of it. And, you know, you know, printable documents, courses, all that stuff, selling content that other people can use for commercial use. Um, and I always have trouble with the question, like, what would you have done differently? I always think it's a process. So, you know, I had to learn everything that I did. But the one thing that I would always say is to myself is that I would to be more focused. It's easy to get distracted with all kinds of different ideas. And I think that, you know, had I focused more on certain things, then some of those things might have been more successful. But you're only going to learn by doing. So, you know, thinking about or worrying about what you've done wrong is not the place, the thing to do. It's like figuring out what you learned from what you may have done wrong <laughs> and go from there. So what's the first thing someone should do when they first start to create an online business selling digital products or printables? The very first thing, the center thing should always be attempting to grow your mailing list. So even if you start building your audience on social media or other ways or start selling products on Etsy, always make sure just do this part to make sure you have a place where you can get people to sign up for your subscriber list, a mailing list. And the reason we say that, even though like, oh, email's dead or it's dying, but it's not. And I guess it will depend how, you know, the age of your audience, younger audiences maybe don't use email as much, but generally speaking, selling products, uh, email is the way to go because it's a commercial uh, format. You know, on social media, people don't expect, really expect sales pitches unless you're actually doing an ad um, and email is such a commercial medium it's a way for you to keep in touch with them and it's important to have so no matter how you're building your audience always be funneling into that 
that mailing list. So make sure you have a process set up for people to subscribe, that you have some nice free gift that they can subscribe to so that they want to become your subscribers and make sure you're you know nurturing that list and emailing them as well that definitely has to be a part of it if you're in it for the long term because if you're selling products on etsy or somewhere else you know etsy has your customer list you need a way to be able to keep talking to those people um, and perhaps you know selling them different types of products that they wouldn't even find on etsy you might want to recommend products that you receive a commission for or something like that. You can't do that just through the one third party platform. It is obviously, and I think you would agree, it is the, the most cost effective way of reaching your audience by yeah. creating an email list. So th the question that I would like to ask, which is a follow up question is, how do you get them to sign up? Um, let, let's say if you run an Etsy shop or you run any, any other um, you know, running videos on other platforms, how do you get people to sign up on, um, on your email list or how do you, you know, lure them in, so to speak? Yeah. I mean, it could be a lot of different things. It could be a report. It could be something printable that they download. It could be another video, but, but, and you can set up one that would be appealing to most of your audience, but the more you can target it to what you're actually doing, the better. So for example, say you, you are, um, you know, selling a certain type of printable, but you have another document or something that will make it easier. Or if you've written a book and you have a worksheet or a checklist that they could come and grab that's related to that book, you want to make it as tar always as targeted as possible because if you're just offering general things, then people aren't going to come. But if you can relate it to what you've actually just sold them or what content they've just consumed, then they're more likely to come. So ultimately, you're not just gonna have one page that's gonna grow your list, you're gonna be creating more, more offers as you go, and you don't have to do it all to start, but as you, as you go, keep adding that. Uh, what's the fastest and easiest way to create and sell a course online? Well, it's very, very simple. You create a sign up page, and an order button and you sell it and because a lot of people will spend all their time creating a course like the course materials and then they're thinking about starting to sell it and the process can take months and months and months but the easier way to do it is to put it out there see who signs up who's gonna pay and okay so say it doesn't work out you don't have to you don't actually have to create the course but you can just do a live training um you know what a session on zoom or something or even facebook live and then so you've already got the people signed up and you just deliver it so it all gets done with almost out without you having to worry about all the details wondering if it's perfect and you learn a lot through your audience and what they want to pay for that way and that's something that you know we are Talk, definitely talking about in our upcoming, upcoming training as well and working showing people how it's done exactly step by step so uh, if you know I'm happy to kind of expand on that and I know you have a lot to share there as well absolutely so how can someone boost the value of their course to sell it at a higher price well that's a great question of course um, so always we have a lot of great questions submitted by our community <laughs> that, that, they're very yeah. smart and clever and they want to know what actually works so right i think the the way to look at that like if i want to sell my product for more is always think about how you can get your your customers results so anything you can add that will help them achieve what they want is what they're trying the problem you're solving the goal you're helping them reach anything that helps them actually do it and get it done and get those results is is going to be able to increase the value because then they obviously will see the value because they accomplished it they'll also share your they'll share their results bring other people to you some ways you can do that is uh you know a lot of people try to do more personalized help sometimes some people do one-on-one -on -one coaching which for me I, it's not something i enjoy because i feel like that's you know using up my hours and they're paying me for my time which was like freelancing even though it could be more lucrative it's very time consuming but you can do coaching as a group you can offer a community where you know your community is also helping each other and of course always printables printables are the perfect thing 
you know, worksheets, planners, journals, uh, checklists, all those great things that they're, they are action oriented and help people, help people, you know, go from the beginning to end and achieve what they wanted to achieve. So when you add those kind of elements, that, that can certainly increase the value of your product in your customer's okay. eyes. Okay. How can you get started with printables? Do you have to be a designer to get started with printables? Or is there an easier, uh, quicker option? Well, I think, yeah, people ask that a lot. I mean, you can look on Etsy and you can see these beautiful printables um, that, you know, like, you know, they can be home decor, they can be, you know, decorations for parties or even journals and planners that are super beautiful. And I mean, you can, if you want pretty ones, you can start with done for you content like we make at eKit Hub. But I will say that how it, it depends on where you focus. For me, it's always about helping people solve problems. And if you're helping someone solve a problem, achieve a specific goal, then how the printable looks doesn't always matter. It's just that it's practical. And I personally like, you know, ones that we create, our team creates, because they are designers. I am not a designer. You have more design skills than I do, Yusuf. But um, then I, that, you know, those are nice. But for me, when I'm creating something for my own uh, students or something like that, it rarely looks pretty. It's functional. So, no, you don't need to be a designer. You can be, but it's not a requirement at all. So Marie um, has been selling printables, but f uh, she felt people were pricing their products too low on the Etsy market. So she's looking elsewhere for other options to sell her products. Um, so she's asking, uh, selling the printables on my own website, should I do the same or how, how do I decide a good price for my products? Yeah, pricing is always the big question, right? And whether it's a course or printables or anything else that you're selling these digital products, it's digital, right? So we're like, how do we do this? And I think a lot of it will come through trial and error. And people always want a specific answer, but there is no specific answer. It depends on a few things. It depends on your audience. You know, what type of people you are attracting through your marketing? Are they people who have a lot of disposable income? Are they the type of people who want to just spend the money because it gets done for them and they don't have to worry about it? Or are they maybe more frugal or don't have as much money to spend? But then maybe you'll reach more of them as well. Like, if, you know, your audience might be large and selling at a lower price is not a bad thing, especially if you can gather a bigger audience. It also depends on your preferences, really, like how much how much you want to put into it, how you're willing to 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 present everything that you sell to them um, and where you sell. If you have direct competition or not, even on Etsy, um, you know, if if you learn to do the good, like uh I guess would we call it still search engine optimization or even yeah, it would be because if your Etsy listings are getting a lot of traffic from search, you probably have to worry about your competition a little less because people are searching for something. They're finding your listing. Yes, maybe they'll do some comparison, but you're at an advantage there. So you're not always you want to look at what other people are doing, but you don't always want to base it solely on that because it depends what advantages you have. Or if you already have an audience, like I said, it depends on your audience, if they have more money, but or also if they trust you more than they would trust other sellers, you're also at an advantage. For me, I think, you know, start if you're starting, look around what you're comfortable with. <laughs> I think it's always better to start lower and go higher because if you sell a specific type of product at a really high price, get some customers and you lower it, it kind of creates weird optics uh, for starting at a lower price and then slowly adding more value or increasing it as you see it's able, you're able to is, is I think a smart way to do it. Also, it rewards the people who purchased from you early on, right? So make it, make it advantageous for people to get on board early. I would also, I agree with what you're saying. I would also add um, that printables are actually the best way to 
um, the best product that you can use to experiment when it comes to different pricing because it doesn't have a unit cost. Unlike yeah. if you sell uh, a t-shirt or you sell uh, shoes or whatnot, it, you know that you've, you can't sell it below a certain price yes. because it costs you that much. But yeah. when it comes to printables, they have a flat fee, either uh, whatever that amount that you've paid to the designer or uh, for the uh, PLR use product or um, but so you don't you keep can... paying that over and over, right? For each one. Absolutely. And yeah, Absolutely. and I think that's why people get more confused or worried about how to sell it at because it is intangible and there aren't all those costs. But that is an advantage. It's not a disadvantage. It's you have Absolutely. so much room to mess around. <laughs> so you can experiment with all the different yeah. pricing until until you find what actually works. Um, mm -hmm. So Marie has also um, a follow-up question. She's saying, shall I sell my printables for uh, personal use or as private label rights products or yeah. PLR? Yeah, which would be like commercial use for anyone who's not familiar with PLR. But um, I will tell you, like straight off the bat, selling commercial use content is very lucrative because anytime you can help people make money, <laughs> you can probably make money, right? Mm -hmm. So it's it's a decision to make and that, I mean, it's also one of those things you can change your mind about, change it. For me, I would think though, if you're doing something for personal use, and it's to the general public, to the general consumer, you probably don't want to have the commercial option and the personal option at the same place. You might want to sell it separately. You might want to make packages that, you know, bundle up a bunch of stuff and sell that with commercial use. So you're actually selling a kind of a different product. Um, we personally, you and I, when we create courses, sometimes we do offer the resale rights and we do that on the same page because our customers already understand that you know we offer that type of content normally so it makes sense so if it doesn't make sense for your audience don't create that extra confusion or maybe it works i don't know but um yeah it's it's a personal decision on how you want to do it a lot of people feel protective of their content and they don't want it being used commercially but i I, I think that's silly because, I mean, it's just content. <laughs> Everyone makes it. There's so much out there. Um, and if you have something that's useful for people and helps them grow businesses, hey, why not? Awesome. So Melanie asks, uh, what is your favorite way to research um, for new best-selling printables ideas without going down the rabbit hole? Yeah, there's rabbit holes, right? Bell, I'm going to give another sort of non-answer, but luckily, actually, I do have an answer. <laughs> but luckily, we also have Yusuf because I know when we do our, our intensive training on the course creation with printables, you're going to, you're like doing more like the Etsy research, the the keywords and stuff like that. I don't like doing that. I never really like doing that. So I always do it by building an audience and then learning from them. So I think of what problems my audience has and I do that. I may look around and you know what's out there as well, but I'm doing it sort of in a different way. But there, you know, obviously there's there's both ways and I think either way is not overthink it, right? And a lot of this printable stuff and course creation, especially the way we teach it, it's you're not going to invest your life's work into creating a single product. There's lots of opportunities to test, expand every little product that you put together could la later become in a bundle and you can sell it again. So even if your first time out, it's not the best seller because maybe you needed to add something else to it, then you've, you've got lots of opportunities to make up for it. It's all digital. It even the, and it only costs you money once or time once to create, right? So you can build from there. Absolutely. So you can use um, your competitors to know what is selling. You can also use Google search, uh, search engine, Bing. You can use Etsy. Just look at the best selling products. There is a uh, tool called uh, Everbee. 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 Oh. <laughs> I can't believe it. I use it so much. I can't believe that I forgot it. I actually have a few videos um, on how to use that um, 
tool, which is a Chrome extension that shows you, that makes you uh, analyze or be able to analyze Etsy products. Um, and you can see what actually is selling so that you can either replicate or get some understanding try to um, come up with similar products that you can sell uh, online. So yeah, you, you can do different ways of researching different things. Um, but the best thing is look at your competitors and there are tools out there to look at your competitors, whether you're using a search engine or a ex um, Chrome extension tool that makes you dive into different products being sold at different platforms. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so you'll get the, better, the both sides. So I do like our audience building side, the more research, we're going to share a lot more about that. And yeah, Yusuf is more step by step. I'm like, we'll just do it, see what happens. So <laughs> I think you'll finally make a good team <laughs> to learn Absolutely. from. Absolutely. Absolutely. Beth asks, when creating content, did you start by creating everything yourself or do you outsource it? Always a combination from the beginning and I think what I'd like to say first though is to realize that as a business owner that marketing is a full-time job being the CEO is a full-time job but we're still most of us are still smaller companies so we often end up in the marketing and CEO job so if you're creating all the content that you need as well then you're 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 keeping it you're keeping yourself from being able to grow your business as much as you can so you do want to outsource it and i think you know to start with um you can use private label rights content the commercial use content like we sell at ekit hub you can also you know create a community i love one thing i did too early on and and i had a message board forum now i I think they still exist but not as much but now we have Facebook groups and other platforms like that having your audience participate in there and have them create content for you so you can kind of do it without that's like a, a free way to get content created right or that and that you can share when they ask questions you can answer them or maybe they answer questions also that's that's content as well so look at how you know your resources but ultimately you should be investing money into creating the content if you know creating if content is going to be your product definitely get help with that start building a team slowly reinvesting a little bit as you can and more and more because the less you your hands on with the creating of the actual products and content that you use to promote your products then the more you're going to have to plan the strategy so i personally yeah i didn't i don't think I mean, I think I started outsourcing fairly early. And when I started doing the private label rights content packages, I never, I never made those myself. I it would have taken way longer or I'd just be working all the time. Like I do know some very successful uh, sellers of content who do their own content, but they are working all the time. And that's not what I wanted to do. Okay. Um... If someone wants to start a business selling courses or printables, this is again another question from Beth. Um, what would a reasonable daily or a weekly schedule look like for that type of business? Well, I think that's up to you. And I think that's a great follow up to the outsourcing question because the more you build your team, the more, more flexibility you have in your schedule. Um, and how much time you'll spend really depends on all the little decisions that you make on how you want to run your business, how you want to build your audience, how much you want to be involved. But I think it's important to make sure that you set aside every day or every day that you work uh, is to do three things. And first is do something to build your audience. So do something that will help you get more people in your community, on your mailing list, wherever it is. And if they get in your community, try to get them on that mailing list. But do one thing every day. Also do one thing to grow your sales every day, whether it's send out an email or which probably should be done anyway every day, but um, something that will increase your sales, work on a sales page, do something. And then also to nurture your audience. So 
that would be communicating with them, helping them, being useful so that they want to continue to listen to you. So it's build your audience, do something to grow your sales and nurture your audience. So three things every day. And that's how you can build your schedule around that, I think. Aneta is wondering about the use of PLR. Uh, she feels that some people have imposter syndrome by using content by someone else. And she wonders how to get over that. Yeah, I can understand that, right? You're thinking that you feel like that you should, if you're selling a course or you're doing something that you should, if it should be you, but you have to remember that you're a business owner and you're not, you can't be everything to everyone. And I know like for me, when I first started, I not so much in the, the PLR didn't really exist, but it was like, I thought I had to answer all my emails. I also had that forum. And at first I didn't kind of enlist, try to get encourage my community members to be more involved. Like they were involved, but I, I was more purposeful about it later. Like I had people doing moderating the community for me, but I thought I had to do everything. And there was a real expectation from my audience because I answered everything. They, they, they thought they could message me anywhere and that I would help them. I had to learn to understand that I cannot be everything. I am trying to create something that is useful to them, but I will bring in different people and different pieces of content. And you can think of PLR as just bringing in different people. It's, you know, people on your team. It just happens to be done for you content. It's already done. You don't have to instruct anyone on how to make it for you. And every other business does this, right? We, you know, you go to the store, you go to Walmart, you go to the grocery store, they're selling other people's products, but hopefully, and they're doing some, you know, research in the quality and making sure that it's, it's useful for their customers. Otherwise their reputation goes, it goes bad. So it's the same thing. You are going to use useful content. You're going to purchase quality content. And for me, like looking at how I use it is I rarely use something just out of the box and then I put it out there. It usually gets incorporated into a course or something else. Uh, but I do use PLR a lot. You know, like if I have I'm going to do a course on something, you know, I would come up with the outline. But when there's certain details or steps that need to be done or a bullet point list of ideas that will often, you know, I'll use PLR to do that, but I read through it, make sure it fits what I'm talking about, but it still saves me tons of time because it's already there, but I am the frame for everything. I guess my vision and what I, the message I want my business to send, I make sure that all the content I use fits that is biscuit doing something. Yeah, she just got up. <laughs> <laughs> I have one more question for you. Yes. If sir. someone would like to start selling printables or courses, where can they get started, Alice? Well, they should come on by ekithub.com. We do have some samples of content that you can try out for free. Uh, you should also come by our Facebook group, be a part of that because we share lots of different strategies. It's a great place to get questions answered. And of course, they should subscribe to the YouTube channel because we have lots of great content coming up there. We want to expand on what we're offering for our customers and help them more with their step-by-step -step stuff and really get them started. All right, thank you guys. I hope that Alice has answered all of your questions. Please keep on submitting your questions and I'm sure we will uh, find some more time to answer more of your questions in a setting like this. Yeah, so, that would be great. Look forward yeah. to it. Thank you, Alice. Thank you. Thank you, Yusuf. Thank you, Yusuf. Bye. <laughs> I know. I, I had to say it. I don't want to leave myself out of it. All right. Bye.